In this video, I'm gonna show you how using gels in the studio can add a splash of color to your backgrounds. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. And today I'm joined in the studio by Philippa. She's gonna be the model for today, and this video is all about colored gels. So colored gels, these little pieces of plastic can be an absolute godsend if you're working in a small studio environment like me, and you don't have dozens of different colored backgrounds at your fingertips. Now you might've noticed in my previous videos, I've shot with a dark gray background, and there's a reason for that, it's because I like it. Uh, not only do I like it, but it's also really handy if you want to change the color by adding gels. So let's see, see how this is gonna work. So at the moment, I've just got one key light above Philippa and nothing in the background at all. Let's just take a picture, see how this comes out. Okay, here we go. So with that shot, as you might imagine, what I end up with is a background that's dark. But did you imagine it was gonna go that dark, completely black? Well, gray, if you don't light it, is gonna go black. However, if I add in a background light, for example this one, and I add in a gel, I've got a red gel in here, that is gonna completely change the look of the shot. Let's take a picture and show you. Here we go. Now I promise you that really is the same background, the same gray fabric background as we started with, but this time it's gone that lovely deep red color. In fact, I can make this background red, I could make it blue, I can make it green, or I could even make it yellow using the supplied kit of gels. And of course, there's plenty more gels out there other than the ones that come with the streak light in the kit. So let's run through the, the basic setup for this. For my main lighting, I'm gonna use something known as beauty lighting or butterfly lighting. It's basically a soft box at the top and then a reflector below just to reflect some light back underneath Philippa's chin and light the shadows in that part of the face. Really simple, really straightforward. If you want to see more information on some lighting techniques, don't forget to check out the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find tons of information. My background light is on and I've got a red gel in there at the moment, but I'm gonna change it. You don't have to have just one colored gel, so I'm gonna add in a yellow to the red to get orange. So let's see how that works. Let's just take a picture, here we go. And sure enough, we've got that beautiful, strong orange glow behind Philippa. That looks absolutely fantastic. Now we can change the intensity of that orange glow simply by changing the power of the light. And because I'm using the, the streak light system here, I can actually do it on the remote control on top of the camera here. So I can lower the output from the background light by one stop, and we'll take the same shot and that's gonna give me a much darker, deeper, richer color, or I can increase the power by a stop in the other direction, and that's gonna give me a much brighter, much more vibrant, uh, rich orange color in the other direction as well. So you can tweak and change the colors of your background by changing the intensity of the background light. That's why gray works so well. If you try to do this with a white background, you'd end up with pastel colors. So that's the basic idea. What we're gonna do now is just do a shoot using these basic principles. Okay, let's get going. Are you ready? Brilliant.
Well, there we go. We got some absolutely fabulous pitches there. Philippa, what a star. And I think they're going to look absolutely wonderful, but I don't know. Let's get them into Photoshop and I'll edit my favourite picture right now. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest and your chance to win amazing prizes. I find these gels to be absolutely essential for my small studio photography, but the colour you get isn't always exact simply by looking at them. For example, the red isn't quite red, the, the green definitely isn't very green. And there's a number of factors that control the colour. Yes, we saw in the video that changing the background light will change the colour, but there's other factors, more subtle factors, things like the white balance you use, and also the background you project your colour onto. The grey I use perhaps isn't quite perfectly grey, I think there's a definitely a hint of blue in there. So if you want a pure grey, go for something like a roller continuous paper, thunder grey, what a great choice that would be if you're doing a lot of gel work. Alternatively, you can do what I do, which is just pop into Photoshop and we're going to make a few changes to the colour there. So here in RAW, I'm going to jump over to the HSL stroke grayscale tab. And of course, if you're using Lightroom, it's exactly the same in Lightroom. Here I can make adjustments to the hue, the saturation and the luminance of the colours in my image. Let's start with the hue. Looking at the picture, the plan was really simple. We've got this sort of purple chiffon material, I gelled the background to go purple and we chose the makeup to tie in. But somehow, somewhere along the line, doesn't quite come together. This lipstick is definitely the wrong shade of purple. So let's see if we can change it. And we can change it by moving these sliders that are appropriate. And I think the lipstick is kind of magenta -y. If I move the magenta slider, yep, you can see I can really shift that around. And I can match the lipstick to the background and the chiffon, but it just doesn't look right. So rather than doing it that way around, I'm going to match the, the material and the gel to the lips. So if I move the, the purples, yep, there we go. We can just make it a sort of a pinky purple. And maybe we'll just push a little bit more magenta up as well. And now we're getting a little bit closer in colour, and that looks a lot better. But we can do more than that, of course, because we can change the saturation too. So on the saturation, we'll just pull up the purples a little bit, and maybe just pull down the magentas. Now we're getting a much closer match. Finally, we've got the luminance, and I can make my purples brighter, and maybe just pull that down, or pull up, yeah, let's just pull that up a little bit on the magentas. There we go. So now we're getting a, a look that is much, much closer. I'm not going to worry that about absolute accuracy. It is a feeling that I'm looking for rather than an exact copy in colour. And just to show you where we started, that's what came out the camera. And there we go with a little bit of tweaking in Photoshop. That's what actually I had in my mind. Well, if you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos from myself and the other amazing presenters here on Adorama TV, you've got to click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com. In this video, I'll show you how to turn 50 almost identical pictures into a work of art. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. And today, you join me down on the beach, where we're going to do a photography shoot with a bit of a difference. Now, if you like your photography to be arty, to be a little bit more than straight photography, I've got a really simple, really brilliant tutorial for you, and it involves taking pictures. Lots of very similar pictures. And then we're going to use Photoshop to bring them together and we'll have a beautiful painterly effect at the end. Now, to achieve this, I've got a couple of things. I've got a, a lovely beach, which is handy. Uh, I've got my model down there who is holding a red umbrella. And we've got a beautiful blue sky. You can see there's been a little bit of planning involved with this. And all I'm going to do is just take a picture and then I'm going to repeat the picture over and over again. But each time it'll be ever so slightly different as we walk our way along the beach. So that's the theory. The shooting part of things doesn't get simpler than this. Now, 
As far as photography goes, I want to make sure that everything changes slightly, so we're going to walk along the beach, except my model. And that means I'm going to try and keep her exactly the same distance, exactly the same pose, as much as I possibly can, shot to shot to shot. And we're going to do this a lot of times. Okay, so let's take the first picture and get going. Okay, so here we go. A little bit breezy. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to frame up my shot by looking through the viewfinder and trying to pick out the middle of the umbrella and I'm going to put it over one of my little focus points and every picture it'll be in that position. That helps me to get consistency. Okay, so here we go. Let's just find my position. Okay, here we go. Take the picture. Brilliant. Okay, so that gives me one shot. Now all I need to do is move along the beach a little bit further. So Freya, do you want to take a couple of steps to your right? And again, brilliant, that's it. I'm gonna take another picture. Here we go, so frame it up as close to exactly the same as before. Take the shot. Now we're gonna do this again and again and again. So Frey, take another few steps across. Brilliant, and here we go again. Same shot, same positioning. Now, you might think that all of these are going to look the same, but when they join together, there'll be small differences, small nuances in the, the gravel, the, the, the pebbles here, the, the sky. Everything will be slightly different, and that will work as a beautiful, arty picture. How many of these pictures should you take? Well, simply, the more the better. A hundred would be good. I might be asking you a bit much. Ten as an absolute minimum. Twenty would be better. Fifty would be ideal. But basically, the more you take, the better this will look. So. Let's keep taking some pictures. Okay, Frey, take a couple of steps across. Okay, and here we go. Bang, and again. Brilliant. Bang, and again. And again. <laughs> and again. Okay, so I'm gonna keep doing this for the next few minutes just to get as many of these as we can, and then we'll bring them into Photoshop and we'll bring them uh, all together as one single image. You don't have to watch me do this repeatedly because we're gonna go into Photoshop right now. Surprisingly, the photography was actually quite quick. Once we got into a rhythm, we took all 50 pictures, actually we took about 60 pictures, in just a few minutes. And fortunately, the Photoshop bit is equally simple. So let's jump into Photoshop and see how to join 50 images together into one picture. So first of all, I'm working in Photoshop CC, although you can do this in older versions of Photoshop as well. And I'm gonna use a very neat trick that Photoshop has hidden away under File, Scripts, and Load Files into Stack. Now I've already gone through and I've sorted through to the, the 50 images from that image sequence. So I'll go to Browse and I'll go find them. Here they are. I'm just gonna click on the first one and then press Control A or Command A on a Mac, so they all become selected, and then I hit OK. Now that will load all 50 images into the Load Layers interface. It just takes a second or two, and there we go. Now I'm not gonna put a tick in automatically align source images, and I'm not going to tick smart objects. Basically, I'm just gonna click OK. So what Photoshop now does is it goes and gets those 50 raw files, applies any raw settings that I may have added, and then opens them in Photoshop, putting each one on its own separate layer. Now think about it, if I had to do this by hand, open, copy, you know, paste, go back and repeat, it would take me forever to do, and it's got 50 images to do. So don't be surprised that even Photoshop working flat out will take a couple of minutes to apply all 50 layers as layers. Now, one thing you can do at this point is uh, sit back, uh, uh, try not to spill your coffee, have a, have a nice cup of tea. You'll find that much more relaxing. And join me in just a second. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest and your chance to win amazing prizes. Oh, there we go, that's it. Done, okay, so actually that didn't take long at all, just a, a couple of minutes, I haven't even finished my tea. But the next bit in Photoshop is really straightforward. Let's have a little look. So we've done the hardest part really, we've got all individual pictures as layers and they all look basically the same, but as I flick through them, can you see that each one is just a little bit different? There's just a, an air of randomness to each and every shot. And that's really what makes this technique so successful. Now what I'm gonna do is go right down to the very bottom of my layers, click on the very bottom layer, and then make a brand new layer. Layer, new layer, click okay. 
And on that layer, I'm going to fill it with black using edit and fill. And from the contents, I'll make sure that black is selected and click OK. Now, it won't actually be the bottom layer. It will be one up. So we'll just drag that down right to the bottom like so. Now, that's an important step. Don't miss it out. Then we're going to click on the layer above, scoot right back up to the top, hold the shift key and click on the top layer so they all become selected. Now, all I need to do is just drop the opacity so that each layer forms just a small part of the whole picture. Now, there are 50 layers that make up my picture. Now, you might do a bit of maths, 100% divided by 50 layers, 2% per layer. It's not quite that simple. I wish that it was. But instead, what we're going to do is we're going to get the opacity slider and we're just going to bring it down and down and down. And as I do, you'll see that the individual pictures start to merge and combine. And as I go lower and lower, it becomes more and more painterly. Now, if I go too low, it starts to get quite dark and we lose a lot of the detail. So too low is not a good idea. Let's just bring it back up. I reckon about 8% looked about right. Once you've got it good, just go to layer and choose to flatten the image. And then just to bring back a little bit of brightness, a little bit of detail, let's go to image adjustments, brightness and contrast. And I'll just put a little bit more brightness and a little bit more contrast into the shot, just like so. Click OK, and there you go. There's my image completed with all its glorious individuality and a super painterly effect. So there we go, that's a really simple technique and it'll work on anything that has a really obvious pattern like people, bicycles, shapes that are familiar and obvious to you. Now, if you've enjoyed this tutorial and you want to see more amazing videos from me and the other presenters here on Adorama TV, then all you've got to do is click on the subscribe button right there. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.